Today, we're gonna create a dual exposure poster in Adobe Photoshop. What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dread Labs and I'm a visual artist and graphic designer. In today's video, I'm going to show you a quick and easy method on how to create these dual exposure posters. I'm not sure if there's actually a name for this type of style, but I found these on Pinterest while scrolling and I saw these really cool posters by Object, which coincidentally is an artist that I recently gotten into. Anyways, I'm going to show you my workflow on how to create these colorful posters. So without any further ado, let's dive straight into the video. So as you can see, we have a simple setup here consisting of three different fonts and all of these fonts have a simple light gray stroke around them and I have a blue color fill as the background and as you can see there's also a separate layer here called fill and that's simply here to cover up these tiny little spots that you can see between the letters here so nothing too special so the method I'm going to use consists of smart objects and if you're not sure what smart objects are I have a video on my channel that dives deeper into smart objects as a topic but for now I'm just going to show you how to make one real quick all you want to do is group all of these layers together by pressing Control or command g on your keyboard and uh, we'll name this group v1 and we're going to right click on our group and then click on convert to smart object and as you can see we now have everything in one layer and if we double click on a thumbnail here we have a separate psd file which consists of all of the editable stuff that we have from our poster earlier we can simply close this and what we can do is create a new version of this so you want to right click and click on new smart object via copy it's very important that you click on new smart object via copy rather than you go to duplicate layer because if you duplicate the layer and you make changes you'll make the changes to both of these smart objects and this way we have two smart objects to work with i'm going to illustrate that real quick by naming our v1 copy to v2 and let's double click and enter the smart object here so i'm going to change this blue to yellow i'm going to change the font colors to a magenta and I'm going to make a dark green drop shadow. We can delete the fill layer as we don't really need it anymore. And I'm going to grab one of the barbed wire renders from my Dreadlabs Render Pack Volume 2. Just drop that into Photoshop. We'll place that in the background. Next we're going to go to Filter. And in the Filter Gallery we're going to combine the poster edges and the stamp effect to create this like printed look. I'm going to change the blend mode to Multiply. Add in an orange color. We'll clip this to our barbed wire layer and we'll change the blend mode to screen. And finally, let's add a stroke around the barbed wire as well. And we can name this V2 in here as well. Let's go to file, save. And if we go back to our original file, you can see that we actually changed this in V2. But if we move this away, you can still see that our version one is still intact. So now we essentially have two of the same posters with a different color scheme and a couple of adjustments. And now you want to create this like organic rip effect. And the way that I did that was by using a couple of actual scans of ripped paper. In the Dreadlabs Paper Pack Volume 3, you actually have a folder full of tears. So let's select a couple of these and let's drop them all in. And all I'm going to do here is try to create a shape that we're going to cut out out of this uh, layer here. Okay, so now we actually have a couple of arranged pieces of paper around the middle here. Let's group all of these together and call them paper tiers. So now you want to create a mask out of this. You're going to do that by holding control on your keyboard, command if you're on a Mac, and click on the thumbnail of one of the tiers here. Now you're going to hold control and shift and click on all of the other thumbnails. And this will create a selection out of all of the paper that we've placed so far, as you can see on the screen. All that's left to do is go to the polygonal lesser tool, hold shift while you click, and fill in the remaining hole in the middle. And now we have a selection of this middle part here. Now we can close the paper tiers and make it invisible. Select version 2 of our poster and then click on the mask button at the bottom. And there you go. If you want to change this, of course you can by clicking on this little link button here in the middle of the layer and the mask. You can actually change the shape of the mask without affecting the uh, actual poster. So for example, if we want to move this to the right a little bit more. And of course you can see that there's now a middle part which is uh, black. And all you need to do is go in here, click shift and backspace on your keyboard. 
and fill it up with 100% white. And there you go. So to top it off and add some detail, I added a drop shadow. Let's reset that to default, change the angle to around 136%. Add some distance in there, maybe soften it up a little bit. And we'll do the same with them with an inner shadow. So you can actually see the shadow of the paper tear along the lines here. And of course you can finish this off with your favorite textures. You can either use one from the Dreadlabs paper texture pack that we just used for the tears. Let's change the blend mode to screen. Press Ctrl or Command M on our keyboard to bring up the curves menu and we'll lower this a little bit so it'll be a little bit more subtle. And we'll crunch in the grain of the paper a little bit more. Alternatively, in the thumbnail for this video, I just used a noise texture. I got this from the Dreadlabs Metal Heart Assets. You can just drop these in, change the noise multiply to multiply, and change the screen to screen, of course. Select both of them so they will scale up accordingly. And this is what it looks like without the paper texture. We'll lower the multiply noise to maybe 40%. And there you have it. This is what it looks like with all of the textures. It's also kind of nice, but maybe a little bit too over textured in my opinion. So let's lower the noise screen to 50% here maybe and lower this one to 80%. So there you have it guys, a quick and easy method on how to create this double exposure poster in Adobe Photoshop. If you're a little bit lazy and you just want to download the Photoshop file for this, you can download it through the link in the description down below. This leads to my Patreon channel and by subscribing to my Patreon channel, you'll get access to all of the PSD files and any other project files from all of my tutorials. That's more than 100 PSD files for just 5 euros. And if you want to get the barbed wire render or one of the textures that I used in this video, they will be included in the project file as well, but the full packs can be found on my website, which is dreadlabs.net. So if you have any questions, tutorial suggestions, or anything else you want to share with me, leave it in the comments down below. Click on the like button and the subscribe button if you have not done that already. And with all of that being said, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.